God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The God that sent Jesus Christ said of Jesus Christ, I and the Father are one. That means God has to be Jesus, and Jesus has to be God, unlike this religion over here where Jesus supposedly came in 1914, and he did not. Where the Bible says, 1 John 5, if we witness the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. That is not found in the New World Translation that my God is the God Father. My Jesus is the Word of God. And we're together, the Holy Spirit, are the workers of the salvation. Beware of the liars that come to your door that are leaving. Because Jesus is God, and God is Jesus, and he's able to save your soul today. Notice the Jehovah Witnesses are leaving. It's on video. Because Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves. That is God. The God the Father reached out in love and sent his Son. John 3.16 And while we're in 1 John, let's go to chapter 3, verse 16. Hereby perceive the love of God. Because he laid down his life, the love of God, and he laid down his life. It says in John 3.16 that God laid down his life. Well, the only one in the Bible I know that laid down his life was Jesus. So according to 1 John 3.16, the love of God, John 3.16, the love of God sending Jesus is Jesus is God because God laid down his life. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. I've got a serious message and I've got a loving message that God loves you enough that he sent his son that you may have eternal life. Because you're going to die. We all know that. And what happens after death? According to the Bible, there is an afterlife. There's a heaven or there's a hell. And not everybody goes to heaven. The Bible does not teach every single person will go to heaven. For Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life when those that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God is love that he gave his son. The Bible records that God gave himself. And I apologize for my voice it's with the allergies, but it's still a high voice to raise up Jesus Christ. That there is only one name given amongst men whereby you must be saved, the Bible records. And that name is in Jesus. The reason why we have Jesus, the reason why we have a Bible is all about Jesus. And with the fundamentals of Jesus Christ, we are sinners. For the Bible says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The Bible also says, notice I'm quoting from the Bible. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. So, when you die, you prove... That you're a sinner by your death, according to the Bible. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the bad, the negative part of life is there's death. 
But there's also a, per, a positive part. That God has given us a gift. And that gift is Jesus Christ. For eternal life. Now the eternal life based upon Jesus Christ. Spoken by John the Baptist. Is he that has the son hath life. Hallelujah. Amen and glory to God that Jesus gives life. But in John 3.36, that's not the ending of that verse. He that has the Son has everlasting life, but he that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Now the wrath of God is hell. The wrath of God is hell. Hell. There is a hell. And you will go there without Jesus who is God. And God that is Jesus. You will find your religious leaders in hell. You find in the Bible about church, not halls. Deck the halls. For God so loved the world. Come on, preacher. Preach more about love. I am Jesus Christ. That is the love of God. The love of God that the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. That there is death coming. And we don't know when it will happen. I hope 40, 50, 60 years... I hope, as we watch the Jehovah Witnesses say goodbye-bye, I hope that you will take advantage of your life, but we do not know when life will end. And one of the things that man must do before he dies is he must put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ, who is God. Because if you are wanting to go to heaven, the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There is no access to God the Father except by Jesus Christ. None at all. And that includes your religion, including Baptists. You can't go to heaven because you're a Baptist. And you can't go to heaven because you're good. The Bible says there is none good. No, not one. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. See, in the Bible, God eliminates everything that you think you can do to get to heaven. And there's only one possibility to get to heaven left, left, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. You say, well, you're out here irritating us. Week after week after week, you're irritating. But I'm preaching the love of God. And I'm commanded by the Bible to go all in the world and preach the gospel. And the gospel is, if I didn't mention, I would be failing what the Bible says, go in all the world and preach the gospel. The gospel is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, all men die, but Jesus had prophecy. Jesus had written down in the Bible events that would happen in his life and all those prophecies 100% came to pass by Jesus Christ being born and dying on that cross. So when we say Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, 100% Bible prophecy has been fulfilled by the gospel. And let me tell you, there are more prophecies yet to be fulfilled, and they will be fulfilled 100%. A Bible prophecy.
prophecy that I can tell you right now is, if you die without Christ, you will go to hell. If you die in Christ, the Bible says, absent from the body and present with the Lord. The Bible calls Jesus the blessed hope. The Bible calls dying in Christ eternal life. Now, the gospel is Christ died according to the scriptures and was buried, as you would bury any dead body. But that's not it. Three days and three nights later, he was resurrected by the power of God. The tomb was emptied by God. So the gospel that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to the scriptures. The resurrection of Christ that we just celebrated, what you call Easter, which has nothing to do with the Bible, but what we call Easter, the resurrection of Christ, was Bible prophecy had already been detailed through the life of Jonah and the whale. That was talking about Jesus and his resurrection has been fulfilled 100%. There is eternal life from God through Jesus Christ. Again, it's not being a Baptist. I'm not going to kick religions today. I've already done it. And succeeded. At the name of Christ, somebody left. At the name of Christ, I lift up my voice. For the Bible says, With the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth, Confessions made unto salvation, Romans chapter 10. The very fact that I'm saved and proclaim Jesus Christ is scripture. You can have hope today, but that hope must lie in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And let me go back to 1 John chapter 5 again. I mean, 1 John 3. 1 John 3, 16. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Well, if I read my Bible correct in Sunday school, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And if 1 John 3, 16 says that God laid down his life, God must be Jesus and Jesus must be God. That is a heresy among religions today. That Jesus is not God. And if your Jesus is not God, you're not saved, you're not going to heaven when you die. You have to have the biblical Jesus. Paul tells us in the letter to the Corinthians that there's another Jesus. There's another spirit. And there's another gospel. And they're out there. And Jesus to that says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This is the good news. Good news is the word for gospel. Gospel means good news. Go all the world and preach the good news. The good news that Jesus died for your sins, he was buried, and he arose again the third day. Now the good news is not fake news, like you would find on radio and TV. You will not find the good news on your media stations, your news reporters, because they would rather have fake news than real news. And the real news proclaimed to us by the gospel is that the angel told Mary, he is not here, he is risen. Don't 
The good news comes out of a cemetery that Christ has risen. Christ has gained victory over Satan and over death and over hell. But you can't get that promise unless you put your faith and belief and your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. To say, Pastor, I know Jesus. Say, Preacher, I know about it. Knowing is not enough. Faith and belief and action. What is the action? Come to Calvary, get on your knees, and repent of your sins, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that can wash away your sins. That's it. You don't get your wallet out for salvation. You do not go to a church for salvation. You do not get wet for salvation. You don't do a bounce house for salvation. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. The Lord Jesus Christ that is God. And God is Jesus. Acts 20:28 20, says the blood of God was the purchase of our sins. Well, wait a minute. If it's the blood of God, and 1 John 3:16 says God gave his life, well, most of us know the Bible says that Jesus hung on the cross. So Jesus, who suffered and died on that cross, according to Acts 20:28 20, and 1 John 3:16, that God is that Jesus, and Jesus is that God. Now, Paul already said there are another Jesuses. If your Jesus is not God, you're not going to heaven. If you are relying on a church, you're not going to heaven. If you think by getting wet, that's not going to get you to heaven. If you say, well, look who I am, look what I am, you're not going to heaven. Because the only way to get to heaven is by righteousness. The righteousness of Jesus Christ, of God. That is the only way that man will go to heaven. By Christ's righteousness and not of our own, least we boast. Not of works. You cannot work to get to heaven. You cannot hope to get to heaven. That hope of going to heaven is the blessed hope and surety. These things have I written unto you that you may not... <coughs> Excuse me. These things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. The Bible records in 1 John 5 that you can know that you're saved by what is written. You can know it. Does your religion teach knowing that you are saved? Knowing where you're going to go when you do, without any doubt. Not to bearing candles or, or someone praying for you. That's not a surety, my friend. That leaves room for doubt. Well, I hope Mary can do it. Well, Mary can't. For there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Mary does not fit that by name and by sex. And I'm not here to poke fun of the Catholics, but the Catholics are wrong when it comes to salvation and the Bible. To say, I'm going to heaven, has to be a biblical salvation of going to heaven and not something made up by man. You say, well, the Bible was written by man. Yes, it was. So was Shakespeare. But Shakespeare had no prophecy that came to life 100%. Shakespeare did not have the hand of the Holy Spirit working him to write. You see, the Bible written by man, the pen being man, and the ink, the Holy Spirit. That's the difference. Inspiration. This is an inspired Bible. This is an inspired book, the King James 1611 Bible. It is inspired by the Holy Spirit. 
And if, if we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. If, if this book is correct, and I know it is, if this book is correct that I hold in my hand, that I'm preaching from, if it's correct, if you die without Jesus Christ, you will wake up in hell. If you die believing and trusting the finished work of Jesus Christ, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. See, the positive of death is Jesus. The negative of death is anything and everything else. Take your pick. Satan has all kinds of advantages of fooling you after you die. But fooling you after you die, you'll still wake up in one place called hell. Again, the Bible says in Mark 16, Go ye all in the world and preach the gospel. It did not say give out pamphlets. It said preach the gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So in order to have a person to save you, his death has to be according to the scriptures. Now the pronoun is his, male. That eliminates females. I'm sorry. You think of God what he is. He has set forth a male by prophecy, by death, by prophecy. So Mary can't do it. And Mary can't be, Mary's not American, she's Jewish, so she's not going to change her gender to match your beliefs. Mary's a female, and she was not the one God has sought for our eternal life. Now, upon death of the scriptures, the good news is they buried Christ. They put him in a tomb. And to make sure nobody would steal that body, the Roman and Jewish authorities put a seal on that tomb. And they even put a guards on that tomb. God says, I want to make sure without a shadow of a doubt that no one says that that body was stolen. So world, go ahead, seal that tomb, put soldiers on that tomb, you watch that tomb. And you signify that Jesus Christ is the one by watching the body of Jesus. You don't put a body under guard when you bury him today. A Jewish child may be bar mitzvah, um, yeah, bar mitzvah at the age of 13. But when he dies, you don't put an armed force by his tomb. You do have a wake. But see, the body of Jesus Christ was put into a tomb. He was buried. He's dead. Jesus has died. But the scriptures say, according to a Jonah, three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now let me tell you, if your Jesus was buried on Good Friday, you're lost and going to hell. Hush comes over the crowd. If your Jesus died and was buried on Good Friday, you are going to hell. Because three days and three nights, as spoken by Jesus, as Jonas was three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, in the whale, so must the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Ladies and gentlemen, Friday to Sunday is not three days. Friday to Sunday, three days, is common core mathematics brought to you by the American government that can't count how many days from Friday to Sunday. 
So Good Friday Jesus is a fallen Jesus. It's not the biblical Jesus. Jesus died on the Passover, a high time the Bible speaks of. But let's get over Good Friday. Because early the first day of the week, the women came to the tomb with spices. They were not expecting what they expected. They were expecting the body, the dead body of Jesus Christ, as you would if you go to a mausoleum. You would expect a body. When the women got there three days and three nights later, the stone had been rolled away. And they said, in the Bible, who's going to move this stone for us? It is too big for us. God says, no problem. God moved that stone. And they looked. And there was an angel. Some accounts say two angels. One spoke. And the angel gave the greatest news that came from all the good news. The greatest headline to be found ever was in the graveyard. It proclaimed that he is not here. He is risen, the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures. So the life, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ was all forecast in the Old Testament, and it has been fulfilled 100%. That's Bible prophecy. But we have a problem. That is not all. The Bible speaks about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And he's not coming back as a baby. He's coming back as a lion, an angry lion out of the tribe of Judah seeking wrath of those that have not believed on him. When Jesus Christ comes back the second time, he's not coming back as a cute little baby that you can control. He is coming back as the Son of God, God himself, in anger to put wrath upon those that have rejected his finished work. And if the event, the rapture, would happen today, seven years later, Christ is coming back. Seven years of Jacob's trouble, and then that angry Jesus Christ will return and reject what you have rejected by him dying and suffering and coming out of that tomb for your soul. If you reject Jesus Christ, he will reject you. That baby that was born in Jerusalem will reject you for rejecting him, the one that grew up and suffered and died upon that cross. Now go ahead and mock. Because the Bible said you will mock. The Bible says many of you will go the broad way that lead us to destruction. Many will go that way. But you wait till Jesus mocks you one day. When that Jesus that you rejected proclaims from his lips, go to hell. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Those will be the most scaring, terrifying words you will ever, ever hear. When your friend, your co-worker tells you to go to hell, yeah, who cares? But when Jesus proclaims it to you, go to hell. Now we are here to proclaim, do not go to hell, only Jesus saves. God has set forth the way, the truth, and the life. That is in the way of Jesus Christ. 
If you come to God as a sinner, He will no wise reject you or cast you out. You can come old. You can come young. You can come as a male. You can come as a female. Any race. Only sinners need to apply. You don't come to God as, Oh, I'm good. When the Bible says there is none good. See that moment, you, you could get killed by a Florida driver. Where will you end up then? Man, you get on the road to Florida, you're putting your life on end. You better believe on Christ now. Have a good day. Keep up the good work. Alright. Death is coming. It may come sooner than you think. It may come more sooner than you think. I'll trust Christ later. I'll listen to that preacher later. You may not have a later. When the Bible says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. The only thing that can wash away your sins is Jesus Christ. The gift of God which giveth eternal life. The gift of God, the love of God. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. But have everlasting life. And that life rests upon the man, Christ Jesus, the Son of God, who is God. And the love of God is He has sent His people out to preach. Now you may not like it, and God says, tough. But you have heard the Word. You have heard God through His Word. And you stand without any excuse anymore. And when you die in your sins, you will face God. The Bible says, prepare to meet thy God. And the first excuse, if not one of the excuses, is, I never knew. And by this loud mouth preacher, you have known. Especially you vendors. Where you vendors and myself try to be here week after week after week. And you've heard. You are without excuse. Death is coming. You will meet God one day, saved or lost. You better meet Him saved. You will not like to meet God as rejecting Jesus Christ. Because as we already said in the, in the Scriptures, when you meet God, you meet Jesus. And Jesus is the one that suffered and died and bled that you might have life. When you meet God, you meet the Jesus that you rejected. You will face the one that suffered and died. And you will face the one with your excuses on why you thought Jesus Christ was not good enough. And you must think that Jesus Christ is not good enough because you have not come to Him to be saved. So something better must be more important than Jesus Christ. It's got to be. Or you would come out. And being an atheist, you are saying that your atheistic views are more important than Jesus Christ. Try telling Jesus when you face Him at the judgment seat, I'm an atheist. As you prepare to meet thy God. Prepare to meet the God that you do not believe in, the Bible says. You'll stand before God as an atheist. Oh my, oh. It's you. What do I do? Go to hell, atheist. 
See, there's no God in hell, so you'll go where you believe there's no God. Hell! But believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou can be saved. And when you do die, absent from the body and present with the Lord. It's much better than, and he died, and they buried him. And in hell he lifted up his eyes in torments, being tormented. Luke chapter 16. I'm quoting from the Bible what God has to say. I'm quoting from the King James Bible, the Word of God. I would never give you a New World Translation. Because the Bible says about the world, marvel not, the world hates you. And anybody who's friend with the world is at enmity with God, paraphrasing that out of 1 John. The Bible says that the world and God are at enmity, and you're going to try to open up a New World Bible. You're already at odds with God. You don't believe He's God. You don't believe Jesus is God. You have stolen the title from Jews. You won't face God on a good hand. God told that Jew, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whosoever curses you, I will curse. <laughs> and whosoever blesses you, I will bless. That curse still goes, that blessing still goes on today about that Jew. Now, if you're a Jew, if you are of God's people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, without Jesus Christ, the Messiah, as your salvation, you will still go into hell. For unbelief in God's Son. Today in the church age, being of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob gets you no favor with God. You must also be born again. You must also believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. I don't care what your rabbi teaches you. Your rabbi only has half the Bible. The full Bible proclaims that Jesus says, whether Jew or Greek, Romans chapter 10, all those that call upon Jesus shall not be ashamed. Romans chapter 10. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans chapter 10. John chapter 3, verse 36. If you don't have the Son, you will get the wrath of God. Now, can you imagine what the wrath of God is? Let me tell you according to the Bible. The wrath of God, Revelation chapter 20. Well, I'll turn there. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire, the wrath of God. If your name is not in the Lamb's book of life. A preacher, how do I get my name in that book? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But... They told me to eat Jesus. Be a cannibal? They said, Mary can get me to heaven. There's one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. Mary's the wrong sex. Now, I know that's kind of hard for Americans today because they don't know what sex is. is. There's a male and there's a female. There's no in-between. And God says of the male and female, the man Christ Jesus is only able to save your soul, not the female. So what's that say about your religion? Well, they tell us to pass out brochures and booklets. Chapter and verse. I can't give you a chapter and verse on it. Because it's not in the Bible. Well, I'm a member of a Baptist church. Chapter and verse. I'm a member of a Baptist church too, but I'm not saved because I'm a Baptist. There are no Baptists in heaven. Sorry. 
Well, the preacher dunked me, sprayed me the water gun, put me fully under, put me twicely under. Water can't save you. Water just gets you wet. And if baptism can save you, was it salt water or fresh water? Tap water or bottled water? Which one? There's so many to choose from. There's so many denominations of baptism just like there is religion. But I'll tell you the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. How's that? There's one God, one Jesus, one salvation, one mediator, and one word. The King James Bible. And I've been quoting to you from the Bible. And what has been to be proclaimed, has proclaimed already, has been fulfilled, and there's yet more to be fulfilled in the pages of the Bible. And what has already been fulfilled has been fulfilled 100%. You better believe the prophecies that have not been fulfilled will be fulfilled 100%. And two of them are, Jesus is coming again. And if you die without Jesus, you will burn in hell. That's not popular today. That's not preaching my church. Well, your church is wrong, according to the Bible. And yes, Jesus preached hell. He preached on hell. He says in Matthew 5 verse 30, And not thy whole body shall be cast into hell. That is red lettered. Jesus said hell. And Jesus will say hell to you when you reject him. And the love of God is God does not want you to go to hell. He's long suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. Isaiah 1.18, he says, Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. When a man goes to hell, he goes on his own merit by rejecting Jesus Christ. It's your choice. God has already set forth what you need to be not to go to hell. You just got to trust and obey. God is not willing that any should perish. You're willing to take a bet on your eternal life. That is a big gamble. That is the kind of gamble that most professional gamblers will not take. With them odds. You are betting your whole life that the Bible's wrong, and it's not. You are betting that you are right, and God is wrong. You are wrong. And God is right. And it's sorry that you will have to be cast into hell to believe that. When God says, I am not willing that any should perish. And he opens up his love for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 1 John 3.16. Let me go back there. 1 John 3.16. What you know I'm quoting right from the Bible. 1 John 3.16. Wind again. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because He laid down His life for us. You're not preaching love, preacher. I'm preaching Jesus. That is love. The love of God is that God gave His life for you to be saved. It's a free gift. The wages of sin is death, but the 
but the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6.23 How dare you reject a free gift from God? It's a gift that you can never return. It's a gift that fits all. It's the right size. It's the right color. It's free. Man, if I had free hamburgers up here and free alcohol, you'd be crowding around knocking over to get it. But when I give you the free gift of God, uh, he's not real. He's too loud. Oh, I wish he'd leave. Oh, nonsense. The Bible's written by man. And one day you'll find out that the Bible is true, the Bible is right, and you are wrong. And you'll stand on the wrong side of God when the Bible proclaims, prepare to meet thy God. I'm standing up preaching to you that you may prepare to meet God on the right terms. Jesus Christ. That is the right terms. There are no other terms to come to God but by Jesus Christ. No other. Now, Americans hate that. American wants options. Small, medium, large, extra fat. America wants options. I want male, female, I don't know what I am. America wants options, but God is not American. He's the holy God. He's the righteous God. He's the God that says, be holy, for I am holy, and there's only one way, Jesus Christ. One way. Jesus said, Matthew, I mean, John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, that's God, but by me. That's Jesus speaking. And Americans can't stand that oneness. I want Mary. I want my religion. I want my baptism. I'm a good person, even though the Bible says there's none good. Even beauty is vain when you've been rotten in the casket. It ain't going to be that beautiful when you're sitting in that pine wood box. As you're burning in hell. And no relief. None. When you've heard the preaching of Jesus and rejected Him. You can't have comfort when you reject Jesus Christ. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Well, I'm good. The Bible says in Romans 3, 23, There is none good. No, not one. For all have sinned. For all have come short of the glory of God. All. Even as a saved individual, born again, I sin. I come short of God. If any man, 1 John 1, 9, If any shall confess his sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. I go to my priest, another sinner, what if that priest is having little kinds of fun with children? Is he going to forgive your sin? That priest has been molesting children and you think he's going to get you to heaven? You're a fool. You're gambling with your life. My preacher will get me. Really? The Bible says in Corinthians that that preacher may be of Satan. Not all preachers are of God. Turn the TV and the radio dial on. There's coming a day you will see God by Jesus Christ. Now you better receive Christ before that day because you can face the good side of Jesus on believing on Him or you can suffer the wrath of God by not believing on Him. John 3.36 For he that hath the Son hath everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Go in all the world and preach the gospel that Christ died for our sins 
according to the scriptures and was buried and arose again the third day according to scriptures. There is only one sin that will put you into hell. Not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Well, preacher, I don't believe in hell. Wait till you're there. Wait to that satisfaction when you realize, when you step off into the eternity and you are in hell, you'll say, I didn't believe in this place. Cough. We did not ask your opinion. God did not ask what you felt like. You are the sinner. He is the Holy One. And just because you're American and you don't believe in it does not mean God says, Oh, okay. Again, God's not an American. He's holy. If you don't believe in God and you don't believe in hell, you will face the reality when you die. Because you'll find both. And then try to tell God, Oh, I didn't believe in it. <laughs> It'll come to real belief the moment that death comes to your door. And that your opportunity is now. Come now, let us reason together. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This life that you're living now is not it. There's another life coming. There's a life of holiness and there's a life of unrighteousness. Oh, I don't have no fear. You will. You will. But by then it'll be too late. By then it will be too late. Oh, I got religion. Where's the Jehovah Witnesses? They can't even stand up to a street preacher. And let me tell you another story about them. When you have them come to your door and you preach to them out of the Bible, they take their literature and they take off. They can't stand before a Bible. And you can't stand before God without Jesus Christ. Without Jesus Christ, you will be a loser. Losers are ones that reject Christ. Because you don't gain nothing but pain and misery and torments. All because the Bible's written by man. There is no God. I wish he shut up. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then you'll be the one in terror before God. If there's one thing I have said that is correct right today, is that Jesus saves and Jesus alone. Now, I may have been a little boastful about the, the Jehovah Witnesses, but hey, I got to preach the truth and I got to name the lies. What I've done this morning was biblical, and you won't believe it. You will find in the Bible that they proclaim the name of the liars and the deceivers. And it's my job as a Bible believing, saved, born again Christian to make sure that the wheat. And the tares have been shifted. And the tares went blown away. And it's not even a breezy day. 
It was more breezy last week. You can't come to God in the name of religion. God does not take religion. Religion is man-made. Jesus Christ is God-approved. Maybe you don't want Jesus. I quench at that. But that's okay. Because you'll go to a place where there is no Jesus. You'll go to a place where they don't talk about Jesus. A place of torments. That replaces Jesus. Hell fire replaces Jesus. So if you don't want Jesus, your next best choice is hell. I think I would choose Jesus. <laughs> I have. April 25th, 1987. And I know by the Bible that your some of your hearts, maybe not today, but somewhere in these times of these ministries, I know your heart has been pricked by the Holy Spirit. I know. That's what the Scripture says. And tonight, you may have a miserable night as these words are echoing in your heart. You may be now put under conviction. Listen to that conviction. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now, we may disappear. We may be gone. We may not ever come back. I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow or today holds. But rest assured, God will never disappear. God will never go away. One thing will outlast these messages in this ministry. That Jesus saves and Jesus alone saves. You can rest assured that even myself, death is coming, I don't know when. And yet the love of God, the, lo the love message of God is Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if you think that's hate, you stand on the wrong side of God. Hereby we know the love of God that God laid down His life. That is not hate. For God is love. And without God, you don't know what love is. You don't know the love of God till you come to the Lord Jesus Christ. I hate to have God have to explain to you at the great white throne judgment what love is. Instead, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. That will come out of the mouth of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus will send nobody to hell. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you, are the words of Jesus Christ. Be careful, Paul said there's another Jesus. There's that happy, dopey, druggy Jesus, but that's not the one who will save your soul. Rest the